Yesterday, Julie Kelly, who's an independent conservative journalist on her Substack, uh, <coughs> released this crazy information. So, uh, Trump has been uh, fighting against the 2022 Mar-a-Lago raid and the whole course, uh, sorry, the whole case about his uh, ha mishandling, alleged mishandling of classified documents. Um, he was uh, mm -hmm. attempting to. Um, he was attempting to suppress evidence f that was discovered from that raid from being used against him. Uh, so he he filed a motion to unseal more documents to build his case that the evidence should be suppressed. Uh, Judge Eileen Cannon, who is administering the case in southern Florida, ordered the documents to be unsealed. And uh, Julie Kelly started digging through them. And what she found was insane. So apparently the FBI was authorized to use deadly force when necessary, not if necessary, when necessary, on both Trump himself. A former president. Stop. It says F-P-O-T-U-S. So POTUS, former POTUS, F -P yeah. So on F-P-O-T-U-S and Secret Service during their raid on Mar-a-Lago. Force or deadly force? It said deadly force. Wow. When necessary. So wow. it said the agents also plan to bring, quote, standard issue weapons ammo, handcuffs, and medium and large sized bolt cutters, and were told to wear unmarked polo or collared shirts and to keep law enforcement equipment concealed. So, uh, so they so were that trying sounds to like start a fight. Well, that yeah. sounds like they yeah. wanted them to go in looking like intruders so yeah. that if any type of opposition was was mounted, that, that they could justify the deadly use of force that was authorized. Right. Yes, and they, they claim that the... The, the FBI claims they were in contact with Secret Service before they did the raid, but Secret Service and Trump say they were not notified at all before it. Um, and then, additionally, uh, I have a clip to play. Uh, well, well first, hold on a second. Yeah. Oh, on that, before we move on, why would they tip off the Secret Service and Trump if they're going? If the entire intention of the raid is to discover evidence, they don't want to tip off the person that they're raiding because that person may then get rid of the evidence that they're raiding the home in the first place to get. Correct. And, correct. But if they wanted to prevent a firefight and not have you know exchange of fire, they probably would have said something. So it looked like they were prepared to open fire if they had to to re retrieve these documents from a former president with yeah. with Secret Service. Also, agents. bear in mind. This was evidence that they had already been there to analyze. Like they they'd been to the room, they'd seen where it was kept. The they're National the ones, Archives had yeah. dispatched people. Yeah, there. Mm -hmm. they're the ones who put the locks on the door. Like they brought the bolt cutters and had to bust open the door because they lost their own key. Like it's not like Trump had it concealed and locked up. Like they made them put an extra lock on it and then couldn't find the key for the raid. Now, when you say the alleged classified doc, the alleged is that. Is what he did against the law? Well, if he if he kept uh, unclassified documents after leaving the presidency, he would technically be in violation of that. But as we just saw with the case where Biden did the exact same thing, if not far worse, because he kept boxes of them in his garage. Behind his Corvette. Behind his Corvette. Um, but that's okay because, well, Biden's an old man, so you know his judgment can't really well, be. Well, he, I mean, uh, Special Counsel Robert Hur mm -hmm. was the one that decided not to move forward with charges based on his uh, interview yeah. with Joe Biden, in which he said that Joe Biden was a nice old man with memory issues, and then the Biden administration subpoenaed that tape so that it can't be released from the, to the public. Correct. Correct. Mm. And so we don't. I don't think we exactly know what documents they were looking for that were in Trump's possession. Correct me if I'm wrong. Wrong, but uh, I, I just have a feeling, based on the fact that they are trying to dig up anything they possibly can on the man, that they weren't really that important. Can I because go further down the road? We probably know if they were. Yes. What if they were there to plant something? That's if very much a going possibility, in, too. Why'd they have to come back twice? Why'd they have to come back twice? Why did they have to hide their presentation for who they are and didn't announce themselves, plus being authorized to use deadly force? And, and they were ready to harass people, too. They were given permission to go from door to door to the guests, checking the occupation status of the rooms, and they were How is uh, that legal? planning to pick the locks as well. And they said that they brought a medic with them, 
and they were told to bring people to a local trauma center in case they were injured during the raid. Now, was there any type of raid on Biden's home when it was announced that they discovered documents inside of his garage? I don't remember hearing anything about that. I think it was just a kind of But you think you would if the president of the United States of America's home was raided, you would think that somebody would report on that. So odds are that there was no raid, certainly not a raid to the extent of what happened at Mar-a-Lago, and certainly not a raid that was uh, authorized deadly use of force if necessary. And what's the justification for that? How could that possibly be papers? Allowed? So yeah, January six national security. Yeah, but this is this is the thing though. The reason why they didn't raid uh, Biden's house to the same extent is because Biden is the president right now, and who is in charge of his uh, Department of Justice? Merrick Garland. Mm-hmm. So let's play this clip of Merrick Garland. Uh, this resurfaced the other day. Let's play this. Yeah. When is this from? This is from 2022 after the raid happened. Okay. There are, however, certain points I want you to know. First, I personally approve the decision to seek a search warrant in this matter. Second, the department does not take such a decision lightly. So there's Merrick Garland saying he personally approved of this raid. It's not like this raid was being carried out by some, you know, uh, inexperienced person within the FBI. This is Merrick Garland, famously the man who was uh, snubbed of getting a Supreme Court seat by the Republicans uh, during Obama's last term, the tail end of his term. He was he feels entitled to a seat on the Supreme Court, never got it, and he has uh, vengeance with Republicans now. And then uh, to to make matters worse, um, the agents raided Melania's room as well as Barron's. Uh, what, they think that Melania had secret files of national security? Yeah, I mean, or Barron. Like, Can you imagine? His, uh, Barron is what, 18, 16, 17? Uh, 16 at the 18 time. 18 now, 18. but 16 at the time. Yeah. Oh, the things I had <laughs> I know, right? hidden in my room from my mother that she found at 16. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. I'll you're, just you're be own, honest. forms of classified documents. Well, you know. well, at that time, those documents were on VHS tape because <laughs> I'm, I'm older. So we're talking 2003. Like, they were making the transition of certain adult films to Retro. DVD. But yeah, like, I mean, I can't imagine being 16 years old and having the federal government raid my bedroom and the things that they would find. <laughs> oh, oh poor Baron. Yeah, and then um, the uh, boomers on the internet have this... Uh, ongoing myth that that they uh, raided Melania's panties. Uh, this is I don't think this is true. I have not seen any proof of this, but it is now confirmed that they did, in fact, raid her room, which is, just seems completely unnecessary. Why are you raiding this poor lady's room? She has nothing to do with this. Or their Unless, 16-year-old son. Or their 16-year-old son. Or their son. guests yes. that are there, because more yeah. of them still operates as a facility that you can, I mean, we've done events there, but you can also stay on site there, correct? Well, it really comes yes. down to, like, they're just trying to humiliate and um, inconvenience the guy. You know, same thing as the Stormy Daniels thing. That was completely unnecessary to have her describe the intimate potential details, allegedly, of what they were doing. That had nothing to do with the case, but they're just having him uh, go through that uh, through the public at the public and torture him that way well it's a series of uh, I mean at this point how do you as a non-partisan somebody that's in the middle not look at this and think that there's anything other than political prosecution going on look you're right look at the stormy Daniels tape let's look at you have the raid you have the tape you have the Ukraine quid pro quo thing. That that was one of the um, two impeachments. The other, the Russia thing, where they spent taxpayer dollars on for over a year. Or even the guy who didn't like Trump, the special uh, counsel person, said, "Yeah, there's nothing here." Well, look at the ta- look at what happened this week with Michael Cohen in New York City, <laughs> yeah. where he admits to stealing sixty thousand dollars. Cash Patel said it best outside of the courtroom. He said, "After all of this, after all of these dates and all of these trials and everything that's going on, we have finally found a victim, and that victim." victim is actually Donald Trump yeah. and, and the Trump actual criminal in this matter is Michael Cohen who admitted to six or seven felonies on the stand and that's the star's key witness mm-hmm. so you look at this and you go how many more times do they have to try and prosecute this man for people in the middle to finally go okay this is kind of weird and bullshit <laughs> are people that the average person that pays attention are is the tide shifting are they finally realizing and look I'm not a Trump apologist I'm not I didn't vote for him in 2020 I've gotten <gasps> mocked uh, and ridiculed, merciless, merc- 
mercilessly. Mercilessly. Yeah, mercilessly. got it. Thank you. <laughs> Even that's going to be a clip right there. I, I had a Biden moment, moment just now. You know why? I voted for him. I'm an idiot. I get it. I, I didn't like the tr mean tweets. How I'm could sorry. you? I'm sorry. Apparently, I'm one of the 80 million, if you believe that number, that voted <laughs> for him. I'm now looking at this and going, as a guy that was a, a Democrat my entire life, or at least what I thought, you know, the, Tulsi Gabbard says, I didn't leave the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party left me. I feel a lot like she does. Part of the reason why a lot of people are, are going towards RFK who were Democrats because, well, it's not Trump, but it's not the crazy bullshit that the left is currently in charge of doing. I wonder if those people that are in the middle are waking up and looking at this and going, this is uh, we weaponization of the justice system. This is political prosecution. This is uh, this is persecuting dissidents. And Pers it's just unhinged. I mean, it's clear that from this... Part of them was hoping that it would break out into a fight and Trump would do something wrong. The, like, all these cases are just <clears throat> are just dying, hoping that Trump will will screw up and slip up and something bad will happen. Like you're not you can't tell me that with the authorization of deadly force, they weren't at least hoping that Trump would get injured or maybe killed even. I mean, it's like stranger things have happened in American life. JFK was assassinated as president at the height of his popularity. Well, they killed the a president on him. camera. Yeah, yeah. So and Trump is far more denigrated in the press than JFK ever was. So uh, to think that this could never happen, you're kind of foolish. Well, look at how they prepared for this raid too. the use of deadly force bring bolt cutters, we're going to pick locks, we're going to kick doors open, plain we're going to go room to room, wear plain clothes so they can't identify you. Mm -hmm. Mar-a-Lago is a damn golf course. Yeah. Like, you're not, you're not raiding not some compound. highly fortified compound where, it, like, I'm, I'm sure the Bin Laden raid had a roughly equivalent the amount of prep prep time on this. Were they trying to bait them into a shootout, Pretty though? much. Right? That's, exactly. what, that's, that's what I'm thinking. They're, like, what do, you, what do you think if somebody in black t-shirt just gets out of a van, starts running up to your house yeah. with guns, and you're the ex-president? Especially if the, you know, but, there's secret service there. That, that means they were expecting to catch other people in the crossfire, too. And their goal was, clearly, oh, we're going to go blow open a safe, and then there's going to be a, a piece of paper that says, everyone needs to go into the Capitol. It's dated January 5th, 2021. <laughs> just signed Donald they Trump. were just looking for smoking guns <laughs> in the other case. This I has happened democracy. with Hillary, with Biden, with Trump, and there's obviously a double standard. Mm -hmm. None of them compared to the amount of preparation and and uh, aggressiveness as this Mar-a-Lago raid. For sure. And I think like another possible way to understand this is uh, there's a saying about <clears throat> believing your own propaganda where it's like basically you start lying and then you start believing your own lie. Mm. And I think they have lied so much about how dangerous Trump is and how unhinged he is mm. that I think they actually have begun to believe it where they actually thought that, oh my God, we better prepare to show up to this place. He could have the place uh, booby trapped and like ready to kill us all. Like I think they might actually be that insane insane delusional from their own propaganda. Well, you look at people that have fallen victim to that propaganda and you wonder, like, there are still, and I get it, there are people with pre-existing medical conditions that have to wear a mask out in public. I, I'm not one of those people, again, we've talked about this, I don't go by them and go, bah, my <laughs> sheep. Like, I don't, my dad like does, dad. I don't. Um, <laughs> I, those people clearly still falling for propaganda, right? Mm -hmm. And to the point where if, like, those are the people now that are judging you four years out from this pandemic for not wearing a mask. So those are people that have fallen for the propaganda. They continue to spew the propaganda. My question, they've done character assassination. They've tried to do uh, judicial assassination or judi lock them up. So they tried to assassinate his character with all of the all of the rhetoric and da dictator. He's going to be a Nazi, all of the things that they say. Then you look at that didn't work. It made him stronger. Now you look at the political prosecution not working. Trump is leading Biden in five out of seven swing states when it comes to young black voters. We just saw a poll where he is up among Middle Eastern voters. Like every demographic is voting for Donald Trump at this point over Joe Biden. What's next? Character assassination didn't work. Political persecution hasn't worked. What's the next step to try and stop Trump? Obviously, the, uh, it's to try to kill them. You know, Tate always said that exact same sequence of events. You know, it's character, legal, then uh, your life. But I wonder if there already has been uh, life attempts on him or not. Because the reason a lot of them say, like, remember when um, there was that protest outside and they um, he, like, spontaneously went out, walked across the street to the church, and everybody was freaking out about that mm. um, after the protest. So they're yeah. saying the reason he's able to do that is because they have, like, such crazy technology that could see 
like almost like sonar through like all the buildings and stuff that are around him. So the level of security they have is so thorough that I guess that wasn't a threat. But then at the same time, you hear they have had like lasers that if you point somebody give you a heart attack since the seventies. So the, yeah, the laser attack gun or right. the heart attack gun. And so, you look at yeah, I mean, well, you look know? what's going on in the past few weeks when it comes to. Uh, global leaders look at the president of slovenia mm-hmm. right he was slovakia. So, what was it slovakia slovakia yeah uh Robert he, Fico. there was the assassination attempt on his life the president of iran oh, yeah, just died in a helicopter that. crash right. yep. so yep. it's like hey these people aren't as untouchable as you think especially because according to the reports from the iranian president's helicopter crash it was part of three right mm. there were three helicopters that were traveling and his was the only one that went down hmm. did anybody else read that no. okay no. no just me oh, yeah <laughs> okay well then nice maybe job. i maybe no maybe i found that on reddit conspiracy <laughs> theories i don't know <laughs> true facts i made up.com yeah that's right i read it on twitter so it must be true you should write for vt.com <laughs> um okay so uh connor your thoughts uh, uh political prosecution not working character assassination has not worked what's the next move to try and stop trump yeah well uh, a couple weeks ago shane i think talked about Democratic strategist James Carville saying you need to do the wet work and anyone who, who's up on terminology knows that wet work is just assassinations in the CIA's language yeah. and he says that in the clip he goes mm-hmm. yeah do the wet work it's an old CIA term it means you know do some assassinations <laughs> and he says it to uh, Anderson Cooper live on CNN and Anderson Cooper just goes <laughs> like just yeah laughs. so v- very no clearly <laughs> that's the plan or even if it's not the plan it's the hope yeah it's because the dog whistle yeah, when you see these people carry out these attacks, whether it's uh, FICO in Slovakia or, you know, and a lot of these other ones you've seen, it's always it's always a lone wolf. You know, the, MK Ultra lone wolf. Yeah, yeah. this guy who lone manages wolf. to have no no ties to anything, no background of any kind, one day wakes up and decides he's going to assassinate a political leader. Think about the guy outside Brett Kavanaugh's house. Or the guy who shot Steve Scalise at that baseball oh, game. Oh, how about but, Stephen Paddock, the Las Vegas shooter oh, yeah. at the, yeah. Harv- the Harvest 91 Music Festival? With the yeah. most guns anyone's ever seen. Or, you know, that guy who dressed up like a federal agent and infiltrated RFK's security Oh, yeah. oh look at Saran Saran, who killed RFK's father and then says, I have no memory of doing it. And then you look at all the evidence. Like, when you hear RFK Jr. talk about the assassination, assassination of his father, including the amount of bullets that were shot, the amount of bullets that they recovered, and you go, wait a minute, none of this really adds up to the fact that RFK Jr. met his father's assassinator in prison and attempted to free him. He went to the parole board and advocated for his freedom, and then Gavin Newsom said no. Yeah. Wow. And Saran Saran had no gunpowder on his hand either. So his gun didn't even fire off. It was somebody else in the room. And then think about Lee Harvey Oswald with JFK and like all all these things. It's someone takes out the president or a very high-powered official or makes an attempt on their life. But they have no ties to any groups that might want to see them taken out. It's just one person. Well, it's like a cliche himself. thing. It's you know, like um, like Lee Harvey Oswald, just a, a communist. Uh, Sirhan Sirhan was um, like a what uh, didn't like the religion. He was like a um, extremist or something with the religion against RFK. So it's like a cliche excuse for the patsy. I agree with Shane that like you, they're absolutely vulnerable to attacks. But I don't think it's going to be something like a helicopter crash or whatever. It's going to be something sneaky like the Mar-a-Lago raid. Mm -hmm. Being uh, undetectable, not announcing yourself, being authorized to use deadly force, like looking for that aggressive confrontation. And that is how we're going to hear Yes. it And at this point, any way that Donald Trump passes away, let's say he he dies of a heart attack at the age of 90, there's going to be a sizable chunk of people who are convinced he was taken out through some kind of nefarious my mother thing. exactly yes and yeah. others it's like this is donald trump wins he serves the next four years he retires to private life li- lives into a ripe old age and then passes away of natural causes oh deep deep state assassination the american people would call it out if something egregious happened it will only be able to happen if it's something sneaky like this where they plan it and the fbi goes in and it's an accident That's yeah the but then anything way. that comes out from that they'll claim is national security exactly. we can't give you the information exactly. look at the jfk files uh, the, oh, every single person that was attached to that uh coup <laughs> Is dead. Yeah. Well, who are you protecting by keeping those files secret at this day? It's the same thing with 9-11. We cannot tell you the truth about the collapse, the structural collapse of Building 7 to protect national security. Who are you still also, protecting? Yeah. Also, during JFK and during 9-11, still, they had a very tight control over the media, over the information waves. There was uh, the legacy media was in full control over radio and television. Now there's independent information. And if... 
an assassination were to happen now, everyone would freak out about it. But why do you think they want to censor everything before the election? I have another story where, uh, this is on VT.com, and so is this, by the way, where Soros just poured $80 million into uh, a group, or tw 200 nonprofit groups that are all calling on the tech companies to up their censorship game for the 2024 election. Hmm. So Soros just poured... Wow. 80 million into making sure that the 2024 election across all social media is, you know, that they're completely policing everyone's speech. And we saw already with Instagram rolling out that feature mm -hmm. where now you have to go into your settings and manually check, check on. I want to see political content now. Hmm. So there you have it. I mean, the, the let like they could they're thinking that they could get away with some sneaky stuff, whether it's an actual outright assassination or just rigging the election, if they can silence the people who will call it out. And speaking of the censorship programs like that, it's not just here that they're doing it. It's also going on in Germany. We have a report on that where the AFD party, the Alternative for Deutschland, mm -hmm. which is like a, a sort of a culturally conservative party over there, I believe has been flagged as some kind of uh, extremist organization now? Yeah, they, they've gone through multiple layers of court uh, trying to fight this, but they have just lost yet again where the court ruled that actually AFD is in fact a threat to democracy and can be surveilled as a domestic terrorist organization. This is, this is like their Republican Party, basically.